Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 11, Family Ties. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie to you, this episode was boring. Like, it should have been the finale. I almost skipped this week because it was just so boring. But there are some key points that I want to talk about. I don't know how, but I got a lot of notes. <laughs> so stick with me. Watch the video all the way through. Let's chat about it in the comment section. Be sure to like the video. That helps out a ton. Uh, and let's go ahead and get into it. So we're down to the final four ladies. I'm going to be honest. I didn't see this group of ladies for the final four. I did not think Vanessa and Mika would make it this far, but here we are. They have introduced their connections to their family. Y'all know how it goes. We do this every season. So we start off with Mika. She introduced her dad to Justin. And her dad is concerned about him being single for the last four to five years. Like, he feels like that's too long. And I'm just like, I wonder why people, I don't, I don't know. I wonder why it's like, oh, I've been single for five years. Like, why that's a red flag? Like, maybe I could see... It's like, okay, so I know sometimes people feel like, oh, well, you're a certain age and you're 30s, you know, never been married, don't have kids, things of that nature. Um, somebody, I think it was Crystal XO, was like, that shouldn't be a red flag. Like, that means you were careful and made careful decisions. And instead, it's looked at like, oh, no, red flag, what's wrong with you? But here we are. Mika mentioned him transitioning into a stepfather role again. And I feel like I've been hearing this every episode now. Like, girl. I will say I, I dislike when women do say things like, oh, I don't need you to be a father to my kids and I'm not looking for a father for my kids. Well, how is he supposed to be with you? Wait, what's he supposed to do? Ignore the children? Help me to understand. He's going to ignore the kids. How is he going to be with you and not play a fatherly role if he's with you and y'all are together and we're working on marriage and things of that nature? Like, you better get your Russell Wilson on when you're with me. I don't know what she's talking about, but... Uh, this is a little early on. Like, what I want to know, is he open to doing that in the future? And then you need to back it up with actions later down the line? Yes. But, I mean, she's just like, yeah, when this process is over, you get got to prepare to be a dad. Like, whoa. <laughs> okay. At least that's how it seemed to me. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Uh, I just think it's a lot so soon. Justin doesn't really seem ready. Yeah, he's a teacher. That doesn't mean he's ready to be a, a parent full time. Is it doesn't seem like, uh, well, her daughter is 18, so she's, you know, basically she's legally grown. And the son, I don't know how involved uh, his father is, but, you know, we don't know. Um, Justin did say he wants to take things slow. That right there is telling me what I need to know. Like, girl, slow it down a little bit, <laughs> okay? Uh, and we know he wants his own kids. So right off the I feel like, this just ain't going long term. It's just not going to work for that reason alone. He shouldn't be meeting her children because this ain't going to work because they don't want the same things. Um, and why are we thinking about introducing our children so early on? I know Steve Harvey said years ago, women shouldn't wait to introduce men to their kids. Is what the kids don't like. You can't have everybody you just casually date and meeting your children. You just cannot. Okay. It is it's too dangerous out here to be doing that. Um, Vanessa introduces her sister to Chaz. Her sister had to fly into Dallas. I don't know where she flew from, but I know if I had to catch a flight to have a conversation, I ain't coming to play. And sis did not, okay? Chaz has a dog. Vanessa hates animals, so <laughs> flag on the play. Because, you know, if I was Chaz, I wouldn't give up my dog. And then if Vanessa just don't like the dog, like what she's supposed to do, she can't force herself. It's just, it's not a good sign. Chad says he's been single the last three years, and he said he's had a connection with 10 out of the 11 women in the process. And I know everybody like, what 11 women are you talking about? Who are you talking about? <laughs> the, the 11th woman was a woman on the side? Who is this woman? How He did not have no connections with no 10 women. Like, why are you sitting there lying? What, why? Whatever. I feel like he's full of it, and I think he's saying, like, oh, I got a connection with everybody. Like, it's boosting his ego or something. Like, it's starting to get on my nerves. But um, Sis asks, where, well, where do you stand with Vanessa specifically, okay? Because I, I don't know how you got 10 genuine connections. Somebody saying, hey, I'm interested in getting to know you. Take my number down. Is a connection? Okay. I guess. He going on, give me some BS answer, going all around and around, not really saying, you know, what it is about Vanessa that he likes. Vanessa also wants to know, like, where do we stand? 
She want to know she the top connection. At this point, it might get only connection because we, we getting down to the finish line here. Like, usually at this point in Ready to Love, like, we are getting down to who we're going to be with, okay? Uh, he was talking about how he was feeling overwhelmed. Sir, all you had to do was tell Patrice you're not interested. Like, this is going to matter. Every time a woman comes up to you, you just got to, oh, well, she's interested in me, so she's a connection. Even when you know you're not interested in her. Would you do this in real life? Like, uh, okay, I have concerns. So after he left, uh, Sis says she thinks he's manipulative and wants all his women feeling like they number one. Yeah. <laughs> this With this, you're on point with it, okay? And at this point, uh, Vanessa, I don't know if you're just waiting to walk the bridge. You better choose yourself when you walk across, okay? So Alonzo meets Patrice's brother. Chaz meets her brother and mother. Okay, let's get into it. So the brother asked Alonzo if he's looking for something serious. Does he want something long term? And then he was like, you know, are you looking to buy a house together? Buy an apartment? Like he's trying to figure out like how serious is this? Okay. Now Patrice said her children are older. I'm wondering like how old are we talking? And then he wants some and how is this gonna work? But Alonzo just jokes and he was like, Yeah, let's just buy a house, let's just buy a house and see what happened. Like a little kiki. And her brother was not feeling that. He told him that he played too much and he goofy. And this is the first impression. Like, I feel like as the episodes go by, Alonzo is starting to open up. However, um, he do play too much sometimes. <laughs> like, that would just, like, it's a time. And if I like it, I like a joke as much as the next person. But it's a time and a place for that. He's already younger than her. So then it's like, okay, girl, who you bought this, this goofy kid up over here? And he said he doesn't want to be perceived that way. But I feel like it's just in him to just, you know, to just tell a joke <laughs> in, a, in a tight situation. Um. Alonzo shared that he had grew up with his stepfather. We are, he shared with us last week that he wasn't that close to his biological father. And he tells a time where he called his stepdad, dad. And his stepfather said, don't you ever call me that. Child, well, I got so upset. Like, I was so upset. I felt like I was Alonzo's mama. Because what, did you tell your mama he said this? And what she say? Just piss, don't piss me off with this, stepfather. Ooh, mm -mm -mm. you can see the hurt in him, and he quickly like changed the subject. And let me just say this: that 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 broke my heart because you could tell it upset him. He was like, "Okay, like you do not do that to children." It still hurts him now as a grown man. You don't do that. How can you marry his mother? How can you claim you love his mother? But you talking about you telling her son who came from her? Don't you ever call me that again? You living in a house with a child. Raising, the, you should be helping to raise the child, but you're like, oh no, don't you call me that, huh? What if it's getting there? Especially, especially because he said he didn't have a connection with his biological father, so it's not like his he going with his dad on the weekends or something. Like you're the father figure in the house, and you talking about don't call me that. And he's may mention that he has a sister, so I wonder if the stepdad is a sister's dad. Like I got so many questions because is she going around calling you dad? He ain't got nobody to call dad. And you talking about, don't you call me that. I'm sorry. He need his ass cussed out and then some. That, that was heartbreaking. And for me, I guess I took it real personal. I didn't have no stepfather. But my son, my daughter's dad, my ex fiance. I'm going to just get personal with y'all real quick. And then we're going to get back. <laughs> my daughter's dad, you know, he, even though my son is close to his biological father as well. But, you know, we lived in the house. And when we broke up child broke up was still in the same house though <laughs> but it's like he started to pull away from my son and their relationship got strained and you know my son he acting like he older like my son is only turning 12 <laughs> like he's still a kid so he acting like oh well like he don't have to have that bond with him and it's like and my son don't he don't understand why like why are you suddenly you know mistreating him acting like like he ain't sitting there like that's why i love me some examples like russell wilson and men like that because it's that is a true responsibility if you are not ready for that you don't sign up don't sign up these are innocent children if you don't want to do it do not if you're not going to be in it do not sign up so in the fact that I saw my, you know, someone pull away from my son, that would make me never want to have nobody around my kids ever again. I ain't going to lie to you because it's heartbreaking. You can't force somebody to have a relationship with them. They can say they care about them. It's how you make the children feel, what you show them and all of that. Like, even if it's up or down, however our relationship goes, 
should not affect how you treat these innocent children that you living in the house with. I don't like that. Um, and shout out to my son. Uh, this is just a shameless plug. This don't got nothing to do with it. But uh, his YouTube channel is Jim, J-I-M underscore Slim. I'll put it down in the description and in the comment section. So y'all make sure if you've not already to subscribe to my baby channel. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but uh, I do like Alonzo. I would have, who would have ever, I would have never guessed when Koshia was letting him have it that I would have liked Alonzo the most out of all of the men at this point in time. I would never have known. But here we are. Okay. Um, so I don't think Patrice is serious about him though. You can tell from the dates because he, you know, they over there at the bar and grill. Um, <laughs> they over there eating wings and fries while Chaz gets uh, surfing turf. Like he meeting mama. Why Alonzo only meeting a brother? Alonzo always put Patrice first. But Chaz come in in the last hour because Patrice forced herself on this man who won't even save her phone number, and he getting the good dates. It's like she like to keep kick it with him, have fun with him, but it's like she don't want to bring him around like that. Like she's not real serious about him, and, and I don't like that for him. You know, he don't he don't deserve that. So on a family date with Chaz, they seem initially impressed. Chaz says, "Cause Mama was like, are you wealthy?" And I was like, "Who just come out? Are you wealthy?" Like <laughs> that was an odd question, but okay. He said he feels like he is. He didn't really go into great detail as to how or why. He said he started a few businesses. That, that don't mean you wealthy. I sold some t-shirts. I mean, I, <laughs> but, I mean, I need to know. But, okay, I guess we ain't going to get into it right now at this here table. So her family asks, what's special about the connection he has with Patrice? They didn't ask about nobody else. But for some reason, he going on and on. He said at the lake house, you know, she was showing him compassion, unlike Vanessa. Vanessa didn't. Vanessa didn't show no compassion. She was judging him, and she was being like the way she was talking to him. Not only, he didn't say his other connection. He's saying her name, like, excuse me, that. I would have felt a way about that if I was Patrice. But that's what happens when you don't have a, y'all ain't really connecting. <laughs> but basically, uh, when he broke down, Patrice was begging him to stay. Listen, I don't know if they cut something out and we didn't see it, but I did not see Vanessa judging him. She asked him, where do we stand? I ain't heard from you and it's already 7 p.m. I ain't heard from you since yesterday. That's a problem. Especially when we in the same house. Excuse me? And then you turn around, she's judging me. When did she judge you? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I don't know. And it's like, the fact that you can't explain why you're connecting with Patrice without mentioning anybody else says a lot. Chad shares that he's not that close to his brothers, which is funny because next week he has his brother on the air to meet his connections, but okay. His parents is married for 47 years. Um, I want to know more about their marriage. So this is a long time, like how that affects his way of thinking when it comes to relationships. So after he leaves, the brother was like, mm, you know, he ain't really had no concerns besides the family issue because they real close. I mean, you know, that's great that y'all are close. Just embrace Chaz. You know, everybody don't got the same family ties, okay? Um, Mama said he's so attractive. I don't know what y'all are talking about. He is not fine enough to be pulling all these stunts and shows that, he, that he's pulling. I, I'm sorry. I, I got to be the one to say it. No, he's no. Not to be doing what he's doing. He's a player. He's a player now. I know, I know, I know he's a player. <laughs> uh, and he's not interested in Patrice at all. And I don't even think she's interested in him. She just wanted, it's just a game. She just want to make it to the end. Girl, Alonzo is there. You don't got to play the game no more. But okay, am I more TV time maybe? I don't know. Are they getting paid for the amount of scenes? Like, what's happening here? Um, Side note, producers, the editing. I don't know if y'all caught it, but one second, there was drinks on the table. Next second, it was no drinks. Another second, it was different types of drinks. I said, oh my God, what the food was there? It wasn't there. I know it, it happens every time, but it caught my eye this time. And I was like, Ugh, I can't even focus on what they're saying because I'm so bored. And now I'm looking at the table. So LeBron was supposed to meet with Maya's mom. However, they recently got into it. We're going to get into that. They had a falling out. And then Mama conveniently called and was like, I can't make it. And then Maya like, is everything OK? She like, yeah, I'm, just, I'm busy. OK, I'm busy. I can't come. And I'm like, okay, this is giving very much staged, very much staged, okay? So they apparently met up at a club off camera, which we know we don't like them to do because stuff always happens off camera that we don't get to see, but I digress. 
Ain't nothing happening on camera. But all the drama always happening all behind the scenes. So they was at the club. And a guy, my said she knew him. He came up to her, spoke to her. I guess they exchanged numbers, whatever. That's why we got to stay out the club. <laughs> so he starts calling her everything but a child of God, honey. And then told her, F you. Nah. Nah. We ain't even. I just met. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'll be right behind Rashina walking up. Excuse me, sis. Can you take me to my car? Because I, too, am eliminating. But truth be told, I would have left when Leilin left. I mean, if we're going to talk about it. Okay. So they have a one on one, and she asks if he's possessive. Obviously, that's clear because he was possess possessive over Koshia at the uh, pajama party. So the producers ask, why? She, they ask Laurent in his confessional, why does Maya think that you called her a BIC? And he laughed and told me, because I did. What's funny? I'm, where's the joke? What was funny about that? Oh, no, uh-uh, no, sir. Mm -mm -mm. He felt embarrassed because she was speaking to another man and he don't want to look like a simp. Ever since they came up with that term, I can't stand it. You could have asked her about it without doing all that. Like, you should feel embarrassed from the way you reacted to the situation, okay? He tells her, you know, he just curses because he's from up north and she's from down south. What? <laughs> you don't think people be cussing down south? You from up north? I'm from up north. And do I cuss? Yeah, I, I do be cussing, but I'm not going to be with no man who's cussing me out. That's an absolute no. Once you start cursing at me, that means you don't respect me. And without you respecting me, there's nothing else. To, there's nothing else. There's no relationship. It's unacceptable. You ain't going to be calling me that. We ain't even a, I ain't even a couple. We all just met. And you calling me on my name? No, no, no. She dealt with toxic men in the past, and her family saw that. So basically, that's why her mama don't want nothing to do with it or something like that. And she has concerns, but she says she's going to give him a second chance. And if he does it again, why is he doing it again? I don't know. I guess my tolerance level at this stage in life is so low. Like, I don't know if I need to work on my patience or what. I'm not giving all these chances. We don't even got nothing going on that I got to continue on with you. Like, who are you? I, nice knowing you. Goodbye. Like quick with it. I'm not even about to do this with you. <laughs> but I mean, she want to give him another chance. And I guess it's because she want to make it to the bridge. I don't know. I mean, I guess she said, I've been here this long. Might as well. So we have some, and you know, LaRon seems like a cool guy, a fun guy to hang out with. But he seemed like he needed to be like on a friendship because of that temper. No. Mm -mm. So we have some unnecessary one-on-one -on -one dates. Justin and Mika have a date. I mean, they cute or whatever. She's letting her guard down. She's laughing, giggling. Um, he said that he requires a healthy amount of space and asked if she's clingy. Like, you just come out of nowhere saying that? I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. Do I think that they'll make it to the reunion? I think they'll make it to the reunion and probably break up, like, after that. Long term, I don't see it for them or nobody else. Vanessa and Chaz go on a date. They just do not give me the warm and fuzzies anymore. They just don't. I don't be getting tidbits. I ain't gonna get no spoilers or nothing until we get to like reunion. But yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Mm -mm. With whatever the sister said, that that's what that's that's what I'm feeling like. Yeah. So Vanessa tells Chaz that she feels like he's manipulative. Why did you tell him that though? Like I don't know. Like why did you tell him that? Like that was something for you to know. That was a takeaway for you. Something that you could have told Tommy and the ladies in the lounge. Something you could chat about with your home. We know you like to be talking on the phone and leaving voice notes, girl. Okay, the streets been talking, but not something you need to tell Chaz. Like why would you tell him? Now if you do be with him, he always gonna be looking at your sister sideways. Like I don't know. Let him find out when he watches the show back. <laughs> So she tells Chaz that she thinks she's more into him than he is that than he is into her. He thinks it's BS. I think it's valid. He starts spitting game, and then they next thing you know, they holding hands under the table. Why are we hiding our hands? I don't, was it supposed to be cute? Like I don't know what was that. I ain't never held hands with somebody underneath a table in my entire life. What is this? Well, what is this? Even when you at church and you grabbing people's hands to pray and they told me to grab your neighbor's hand, we doing it out loud in public. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why are we, hold, why, why, why are we being discreet with the hand holding? 
it wasn't like they were sitting next to each other. You know, you like gently just grab his hand or something that makes sense. It was cute. Like, it's like, ooh, reach underneath the table and hold my hands where nobody can see. Like, what? <laughs> Get him out of here. So in his confessional, he said that he cannot confirm that she's his top. Oh, child. Mm -mm. And again, the finale next week. Patrice takes Alonzo on a country western line dancing date. Child, they just come up with anything. Okay. But he came prepared, had on his cowboy boots. After they danced, Alonzo shares that at the getaway, when she was all up in Chaz and William's face, he felt like chopped liver. You know, when they was emotionally dumping on her. And she was in, in accepting all of the dumping that they put on her and the trauma. Uh, he felt like chopped liver because she didn't say hi to him. Um, and I don't know why she wasn't giving him no play. Like, it was like, she was like, let me see who else I can connect with because I ain't really feeling him. I don't know if she thought he was about to get eliminated or what was going on, but I felt the same way. And now she's just forcing the connection with Chaz. I don't like that. Um, I think he's fun. I think Alonzo's cool, but I, and she claims, she says she likes younger men. You said you like them young, but then you're like, I'm ready to be married. I'm ready to settle down. But then you like to be young and youthful and have for which one is it? Like we, we're not doing both. Do I think Alonzo could get there? And if he really is into her, he will get there. I do. Because as the weeks go by, he's starting to open up. He's starting to try to be a little more serious. He's starting to plan romantic dates. He's talking about his past and his family issues and all that stuff. Like now we know more about him. So I think I don't know more about him maybe than anybody else. He says that Patrice and her brothers, he says she's close to her brother. He said he's close to his sister. We know you're close to your sister. You weren't close to your father. You could be a, your health issues, all that stuff. He is doing that. I don't know if it's just not on a, in a timely fashion for her. All that playing he was doing turned her off. I don't know what happened. Now she's looking at Chaz like Chaz is stable. Chaz may be stable, but does that mean he want to settle down with you or anybody else here? No, he does not, in my opinion. So the ladies meet with Tommy at his lounge. Patrice said that Chaz don't give her the butterflies, but butterflies alone are not enough. And well, well okay, that ain't nothing wrong with that. Touche. Butterflies alone are not enough. But then do you want to start off the relationship and you're like, dang, I don't even really like you like that? <laughs> I don't know. Her family likes Chaz. Um, Vanessa's sister isn't feeling Chaz because she thinks he's full of it. Justin and Mika's dad may go fishing, child, whatever. Um, Maya said that her mom canceled. And Tommy was like, well, you should have called me. I could have stepped in and played mama. Now, every season, Tommy going to be filling in for these folks that are MIA. I guess, y'all. Maya mentions that she doesn't like uh, the way LeBron speaks to her and the language that he uses. And Tommy like, make a plane. Say what it is. What did he say? And I don't think she ever did say that he just called her a BIT. Like, girl, just come out and say it. Like, what you trying to... Like, spare him or something, save him. Like, say what he said. And Miko's like, I can confirm because I was at the club that night too, and he said it. Mm. So Tommy said he gonna, you know, make a executive decision to not have eliminations. We don't never have eliminations at this stage in the game. Like, it's too close to the... Okay, whatever. <laughs> no connections this week. Next week, the men are introducing the women to their family members. And all I want to see is what Maya and Laron was arguing about when they was walking in the grass. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this week's episode. How are you feeling about the men now as the season has progressed? Child, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to give me interviews now, child. <laughs> but I will see you in the next one. Bye.